Welcome back on this Sunday morning. Our guest this morning, Knoxville Mayor India Kincannon and her what she called her biggest hire of her tenure. Knoxville's new police chief starts in less than a month, Dennis. Tell us a little bit about him. We've read all the stuff, but what's your impression of him when you're talking to him face to face? Well, I think that he's uh, got a long and stellar record as a police officer and someone who's a crime fighter. He's also got a stellar record as someone who's built trust with the community that they're tr serving and protecting. Um, and he's, he's great at working with the political side of things, with mayors and councils and, and helping get grants from uh, the Justice Department and, and on the cutting edge of 21st century policing. So all the things that we need in a police chief here in Knoxville, he's already got an excellent track record and, and I'm really excited to be appointing Paul Noel as our next police chief. He'll be sworn in June 13th. Good. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about downtown development, which is booming, uh, and I'm sure that's something you're happy about. I was just looking at um, one of the blogs this week. Was, we've got 428 South Gay, 304 South Gay, uh, Hatcher Hill at South Gay and Summit, 350 South Gay, and 2011 or 211 Jessamine Street. What? What's happening? I mean, what do you how you can explain this? I mean, I'm thrilled. When I first had an office yeah. downtown in 1996, we had to get in the car to go somewhere to eat lunch. Mm -hmm. And now it's amazing what has happened. But there is a lot of new hotels and new apartments mm -hmm. and condominiums. So talk about that and and um, just how we arrived at this place. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's a credit to my predecessors, uh, Bill Haslam and Madeline Rojero, and, and we've had uh, a great, great leadership, and I'm really pleased that we're building on that momentum. I mean, people want to be in our city. Our downtown is hopping uh, seven days a week, uh, all hours of the day and, and night, and uh, more and more people want to live downtown, work downtown, and people value walkability. Uh, they have had traveled to other cities and they're like, I want this in Knoxville. And when people want it, then the business community responds. So people understand that there's uh, uh, it's a good, good investment to create hotels, to create condos and apartments, and to serve the people who are living and, and visiting Knoxville. So uh, I'm, ex I'm thrilled. Uh, I think that it's a nice problem to have is, is the challenges of growth. But, but we are also encouraging uh, developers when they come to the city for help and assistance to include workforce housing in, in their development projects. And, and that's a, a, a new and I think a really positive thing because um, we need to make sure there's affordable housing as well as uh, market, market rate housing. So it's a, it's a lot of good things happening. I think the stadium project is gonna continue to catalyze investment in our city. And the good news, it's also spreading to beyond downtown. We see really positive things happening in, in West Knoxville and East Knoxville, uh, North Knoxville, Happy Holler, and of course South Knoxville with the, the urban wilderness and, and Severe Avenue uh, is also getting a lot of investment that, that has been uh, catalyzed in part by investments the city's made in, in infrastructure and parks and, and other things like that. So it's, it's exciting time to be in Knoxville. What, what, if anything, are your plans for the Hyatt Regency building, which sits there looking like the Sphinx? Uh, <laughs> and has had 50 different people say they're going to do something and so far not much happening. Yeah. The current ones or future ones, um, you know, it's not something the city owns. We certainly uh, care about that property and think there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, and perhaps, you know, we, we plan to be moving the police department into their new headquarters at the St. Mary's complex uh, later this calendar year. And when that happens, I'm hopeful that uh, Mr. Clayton will be able to move forward with the Science Museum, which is near that old Hyatt, and that might be an impetus to redevelopment of that property as well. For our viewers who don't know, we're talking about the Stair Step Hotel that really overlooks downtown. Um, and Mayor, you mentioned the stadium project. For our viewers who have been tracking that closely, what are the next iterations that you think the public will notice in, in the development of that stadium project? Well, the, the good news is that we're going to be moving forward with uh, infrastructure uh, in and around the project, you know, that the public will notice because there'll be some street closures to deal with uh, stormwater and, and other things underneath the streets, uh, utility lines and so forth. And so then we'll have uh, get all that underground work done, patch it back together. And then uh, we hope soon that the, the 
private end of the developments, we'll, we'll be able to move forward and, and break ground on the stadium itself and, and some of the ancillary developments, the uh, residential and commercial. The good news is it's, it's moving forward. Um, it's going to be mixed use. It's going to be a great um, asset to a part of town that hasn't got a lot of investment in, in the last 50 years. So um, nobody's being displaced and, and it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be fantastic. We hope to be able to finish the stadium um, by 2024 and in time for the 2025 baseball season when the Knoxville Smokies, and I said the Knoxville Smokies, <laughs> They're going to be changing their name. We'll be coming back to town. It's, it's going to be great. And for, for the money folks, uh, Mayor, we know it's close to an $80 million public investment city county wise with back bonds um, from the public. What do you think is the return from your perspective on that $80 million investment? We expect it to be at least $480 million return, and that's a pretty good return on investment. And, and I think it's going to also create a lot of good jobs. And, and those are um, I think those invest, uh, estimates are on the low end. I think Knoxville's just um, a lot of people want to move here. And as they see the, the city and the county and the state making these investments, they're going to be like, oh, this, this is a place where the public sector is putting the money in to create a place where people want to live and have a high quality of life. And that will attract more jobs, that will attract more young people to uh, stay here after they finish their college education. Uh, and it's just a very virtuous circle. You were at the Leadership Knoxville luncheon this past week and heard from the mayor of Greenville, South Carolina, who had put a baseball stadium downtown. One of the things that he talked about that impressed me a lot was the affordable housing. We obviously have a shortage of it here. They did add some affordable housing near the baseball stadium and a lot of um, apartments that over, literally overlooked mm -hmm. the stadium. So do we have any affordable housing plan for that area around the stadium? Yeah, well, the good news is unlike Greenville, we put the affordable housing in first and the stadium second because housing is really essential. So uh, we just opened up the first phase of First Creek in Austin. It's the transformation of Austin Homes. Austin Homes was an old uh, public housing complex that um, was very dilapidated and out of date. And we um, tore down uh, with KCDC with the city's help uh, took out the old buildings, uh, which had about 130 units, and we're gonna be replacing it with over 400 units that has uh, fully subsidized housing, but also workforce and market rate housing. So it's mixed use, mixed income. It's it's already opening. It's next to uh, two schools, Vine, um, Vine Magnet and Green Magnet Middle and, and the Change Center, and a walking distance to where the new stadium will be. So housing first, and stadium second, we, we got the affordable housing component already in place. That is a, a, a key criticism is affordable housing really across the board mm -hmm. for cities. How much more do we need, Mayor? What is the deficit, would you say, uh, in terms of units, if you have it? Well, I don't know an exact number of units, but a lot more. And I, I'm proud to say that this budget, in addition to uh, addressing core services and, and the compensation plan for city uh, employees and city services, contains $10 million local dollars towards affordable housing. So if we can continue to invest in finan you know, financing gap uh, things from the city and, and get the county and, and state to contribute to that as well, um, that, that is one way to uh, move forward. We've, we've opened up hundreds of affordable housing units since I've been mayor and, and more are coming down the line, but, but more are needed. So we just need to conti continue to invest on that. And I really appreciate all the support of the financial community um, and the people from Justice Knox who are, who are continuing to work in partnership on those issues. We're gonna pick up on some other topics when we come back on Inside Tennessee with Knoxville Mayor India Kincannon. Stay with us, we'll be right back.